You've got it right there. Uh, welcome. It's uh, so good to see you both here for your first testimony before this committee, and we look forward to uh, many more to come. And um, I don't relish the job you have. You have a very difficult task in view of the uh, extraordinary challenges we face as a country. We all have known for some time that as we face the debt and the deficit, the Defense Department was going to have to absorb its fair share. But we all know we want to do it in a, as thoughtful a way as possible. And what I appreciated, General Dempsey, was when you said that you are a learning organization. And as you have talked about uh, the assessment of risks, how you develop strategies as you assess those risks, just a comment. I would hope you also take into account that not every risk can be dealt with through military response, that there are limits uh, to our capacity to, to deal with every threat militarily, that there are perhaps other ways as well. So just, just a comment for the record. Uh, and as a learning organization, I'm sure that that is something you will take into account as well. And also, I wanted to re reiterate the importance of the National Guard and Reserves. I know in the 5th District of Massachusetts, most who are serving today are doing it uh, through either one of those great organizations, and they have done it with such dignity and professionalism. But I wanted to go in a slightly different direction. Yesterday, the former chairman of our committee, Ike Skelton, testified in, in, in a hearing that, quote, the strength of the U.S. military flows from the dedication and skill of our all-volunteer force. Indeed, the new defense budget must maintain our nation's security by keeping, quote, the profession of arms, unquote, professional. And I believe this is a view you both share. With women now playing an ever-increasing role in our military, Supporting our all-volunteer force requires an understanding of the issues and challenges confronting both the service man and the service woman. An issue I'd like to address today is the issue of sexual assault in the military, which is reported with alarming frequency. Mr. Secretary, in 2010, there were 3,230 reported sexual assaults in the military. But by the Pentagon's own estimate, as few as 10 percent of sexual assaults are reported. The VA estimates that one in three women veterans report experiencing some form of military sexual trauma. And I can tell you that from the anecdotal evidence I hear, the stories I hear, uh, both from returning women veterans but also the VA organizations in Massachusetts, uh, that those numbers are accurate. Obviously, it is unconscionable to begin with that so many of our brave service members are subjected to this criminal and predatory behavior. How also, what also, however, what also concerns me is that this systematic abuse will hurt our readiness by deterring highly skilled and patriotic women from enlisting or re-enlisting in our armed forces. In a time of two wars and massive budget cuts, our military needs to attract and retain the most capable personnel possible. In 2008, when Ann Dunwoody became the first woman in our nation's history to be confirmed as a four-star general, Women made up 14 percent of our active duty personnel. We must make sure these women's needs are being met. The House version of, the, of this year's National Defense Authorization Act, which passed in May, takes, takes several important steps to address sexual assault in our armed forces. Uh, this work has been done through the combined efforts of many of my colleagues, uh, Representative Davis, Representative Pingree, and Representative Turner. When he appeared before our committee in February, I raised this matter and our responses to it with your predecessor, Secretary Gates, and asked him why the Department had previously resisted efforts to put certain protections in place. He responded he hadn't realized that the Department had resisted. He would look into it uh, and find out why they opposed it, why not, and why they shouldn't go forward. I have a very simple question, Mr. Secretary. Uh, to, Mr. to Secretary Panetta. In this time of austerity, where we face massive budget cuts to the Department of uh, Defense and potential, potentially threatening cuts if the sequester is exercised, can I count on your support to, find, to fund new initiatives aimed at preventing sexual assault in our armed forces? I don't want to see this budget environment become an excuse to not fund these initiatives. Abs uh, absolutely. I, I thank you for your leadership on that issue. It is it's an, it's an issue that uh, I, I, 
I'm paying a lot of attention to because uh, women, women are performing in an outstanding fashion for the Department of Defense. They put their lives on the line. Uh, they're doing great uh, in terms of uh, helping to defend this country. Uh, and I think we have, to, we have to make sure that we provide all of the protections necessary so that uh, what happens in these horrendous uh, sexual assault cases, uh, A, should not happen, but B, if it does happen, that justice is rendered quickly. Thank you. I look forward to working with you on this.